through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Hello, and welcome back to another Top 5 Exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. And I'm Ed. And today on the Top 5, we shall be talking about our Top 5 non-holiday movies for the holidays. Um, now, we have to define a little bit. Um, when we talk non-holidays, we're talking about movies that specifically don't have anything to do with the holidays. So, Die Hard, Home Alone, those kind of movies don't count. Just I had to ask this too. So. Yeah. So um, I'll go ahead and start off uh, with my number five. Uh, my number five is from all the way back from 1925, and it is Charlie Chaplin's The Gold Rush. Excellent movie. You have Tramp. You have, you know, out in the mountains, out in the snow. Uh, so many classic scenes, obviously, um, in that movie. Uh, the house that's tipping. Uh, eating the shoe. Eating the shoe. Charlie Chaplin dressed as a rooster. <laughs> um, it's just so great and so wonderful and so much fun. And the weather plays a huge part in that movie, which is why it reminded me <laughs> of the holidays. Um, I mean, Charlie Chaplin, like, freezing in the cold. He's just so so downtrodden and everything but it's at the same time it's fun it's a really great uh, movie uh, both versions you know so Dancing with the Dinner Rolls Dancing with the Dinner Rolls awesome Perfect. movie well my number five is going to be a weird one for me in that I haven't seen it and I'm putting this on my list <laughs> right. I'm just throwing a, a monkey in the ranch here in the works here I uh I haven't seen this, but I really want to because it's making me, it's on my mind with snowboarding season coming up. I really want to see Frozen. Have oh, you seen that? Frozen's the one where they're stuck on the On the, the chairlift. Chair. Yeah. And, yeah. I've, and I've read about this movie and the concept of it, it to me, it, it strikes me as like a, a snowy version of open water, which I really did like, if you ever saw that. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that. that it, the, the two people stuck in the in the water getting eaten mm -hmm. by sharks. And this this strikes me as like the, you know, the, the, the winter version of that, which... Okay, so everybody out there, there's probably a bunch of people screaming, "No, it's crappy!" Oh, you haven't seen that? It's great. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, it's on my when you when you mentioned this, it was on my mind. I really want to see it because it's got me in the the other thing that goes with the winter aside from Christmas is, you know, winter sports. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's move on uh, to my number four. Um, Okay, now you will see a theme in my list. My list is all about feel-good movies. Aww. Okay, when you think of the holidays, you think of feeling good. And my number four is from 2008. I, it's one of the best feel-good movies, *Slumdog Millionaire*. Little kid, you know, growing up, having such a terrible life, and it's just this story of him growing up, overcoming the odds, <laughs> wanting to meet his. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a great dancing at the end as well. Um, overcoming the odds getting the girl of his dreams and oh by the way will winning like lots and lots of money um, it's just one of those great whimsical kind of like a fantasy pretty much and every time I see the end of that movie with that dance scene it's just um, it just makes me feel happy you know it makes me love life pretty much if not to sound too corny even though there's like murder and and child prostitution and all those terrible things in that movie somehow some way I feel good afterwards. <laughs> One of the most inspiring movies to feature the protagonist crawling through feces. Oh, yeah, exactly. I, I would agree. I exactly. love that movie. If too. that doesn't put you in the holiday spirit, I don't know what does. So. Well, my number four is I'm going with the opposite of the weather. Weather was on my mind with this. Um, the opposite with the weather theme is Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, and the, okay. The reason being, it's it's so you're you know the weather's crappy outside. So let's you know spend four and a half hours watching a movie about the <laughs> desert, about the heat, and and also during during the Christmas time, a lot of times, especially if you're in school, you have time off. That's when you can finally sit down and watch these big ass, long ass movies. And I <laughs> I, I like the idea yeah. of you know snuggling up with a a good hard hard liquor and watching you know Peter O'Toole at his best. Mm -hmm. um, you know Lawrence of Arabia. Anybody who hasn't seen it. Do yourself a favor, go see it. It just came out on Blu-ray. It, you know, it's wonderful. Can't can't say enough about it. But the desert made me think of the opposite of what we're currently experiencing. Yeah, I mean that that totally works. I mean, Christmas time, you're on vacation. You have plenty of time to watch a big epic movie, and it's one of the classics. I mean, it's one of the greatest films of all time. So there's no excuse not to check it out. Can't say enough. Yep. Uh, okay, moving on to my number three, uh, continuing uh, with the fantasy feel-good uh, theme. It is 2003's Tim Burton's Big Fish. Uh, 
once again, kind of like <clears throat> Slumdog Millionaire, it's this story about uh, this guy who's living this incredible, incredible life. Um, his son, he lost that connection with, and he's tr he's trying to build that um, connection back with his father, but he can't because he can't relate to all these crazy, crazy stories. And the entire reason why I put this on the list is because of that final scene with, um, what's his name, uh, da, 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 Billy Crudup, uh, pretty much ending the story for his father in his own way. And we just see everybody in his life um, just all gathered together. And it's just this big emotional um, just climax. And to me, this is one of Tim Burton's best best movies. Um, mm. I, I love it. And it's... And incidentally, how great is it? is Albert Finney all the time? Albert Finney, yeah. You always forget absolutely. about how great he is, and then he pops up, and oh, there he is, great again. He's great in everything. Good, yeah. good choice. Well, my number three, I'm going with one that I associate with Winter Time because that's when I first saw it. The Godfather. Mm. Another, another time, I was talking before about having time off school and spending a lot of time in front of a TV. Well, <laughs> it, what, the first time I saw this movie was it was literally a snow day in high school and so we were stuck at home a, a friend we went to a friend's house and we rented we were like we're going to rent The Godfather. We've never seen it before. <laughs> I distinctly was, remember his dad walking in midway through the movie like getting home from work and he said hey, spoiler alert by the way. He said, "Oh, James Caan dies better than just about anybody." <laughs> And, I'm, and we're like, great. And it was like five minutes before it happened. We're like, thanks, dude. You know, but, <laughs> That's but awesome. I always, I always think of that movie in, the, you know, the, this time of year, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's The Godfather. What, what can you say? You know, yeah. once again, another classic movie. Um, <laughs> for the people out there, you might as well see the first one and the second one Absolutely. and the third one if yeah. you're brave enough. So. Just settle in with a snuggie and sit down in front of the tube. Yes, and watch Gangsters. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, moving on to my number two. Once again, another feel-good movie. This one's from 1964. Chim Chimney, Chim Chimney, Chim Chim True. Mary Poppins, oh yeah. Julie Andrews has the magical nanny that flies out of the sky with her umbrella to meet this family and pretty much make everything better. Um, pretty much just like Sound of Music, if you have any issues, if you have any problems, uh, Julie Andrews is the person that can fix anything. And that movie is completely, uh, like I said, a feel-good movie. Uh, great scenes, both animated and live action. Um, what's his name? Uh, Dick, Dick Van, Van Dyke with the horrible accent, but it's awesome as well. Um, once again, the other it's just... leg named Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else can you say about Mary Poppins? Um, it, it's great. Like you said before, it's one of those movies that I saw so many times as a kid, um, especially in school, uh, when you're done with all your tests and you need to kill some time, the teacher would pop it in and we would watch that movie. Um, I used just... to know a, I used to know a dude who had a serious the serious hots for Julie Andrews, and he carried <laughs> it over into some sort of weird uh, nanny fixation because because <laughs> oh, of Mary man. Poppins. So you, oh, you can man. read that movie any way you want. Yeah. Spoonful of sugar, for sure. <laughs> um, anyway, um, on to my number uh, dose. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with something that makes me also think about snow. And um, it's uh, Akira Kurosawa's Dreams. Oh. And the reason I think of this is, is in particular, you know, if you haven't seen it, Kurosawa made it late in his life. And it's a bunch of small vignettes. It's kind of like a collection of short films, almost. Mm -hmm. and, but there's one, one of my favorites is this guy who has to trudge through the frozen tundra. And it is painful to watch him. Like, every step is just agony. Mm -hmm. And it makes you frozen just watching this guy. <laughs> and I, I, it, it, it is one of those shots, like, just watching this guy going through, like, waist-deep snow, mm -hmm. that, I, that w when we get into this, this time of year, I'm like... You know, sometimes you're walking around feeling miserable, and I think about that dude. It's it's also it's got some of the most beautiful colors of any movie either. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful flower. It, it really Kurosawa is a master, and it's it's well worth your time. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big Kurosawa fan, and I'm afraid to admit that I haven't seen that one yet. But oh, super good. I'll definitely check it out. Uh, okay, moving on to my number one uh, non-holiday movie for the holidays. It's from 1939, and it is The Wizard of Oz. This is my number one as well. There you go. Hmm. 
The Wizard of Oz, we actually talked about this before we were filming. Wizard of Oz was one of those films that were was always on TV around around this time. But right? way back before video existed and you had to actually watch things when they came on, mm -hmm. it would be like, I think it, we would annually play it Thanksgiving, and it was between, they'd play The Wizard of Oz and It's a Wonderful Life on like, a loop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure somewhere it's playing right now yeah. on TV. You know, and I mean, why not? It's one of the, the classic movies of all time. Completely magical, obviously, and um, scary, and scary, ma ma magical and scary. Those freaking flying monkeys. Give me, give me a break. <laughs> I'm melting. That's what I'm nightmares melting. are made of. Yeah, but it's it's so great. I mean, we can keep going about that movie so much. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. About I, okay, I'm gonna bring up since we, since we got a win, window here. Mm -hmm. My only problem is the end of this movie. So the whole point, she runs away with her dog so that the dog won't get gassed. She comes back, she wakes up. It's a dream. So what's the next step? The old lady down the street is still is still alive. That means is her dog gonna get killed still? Well, have you seen the sequel? Return uh, to Return to Oz. Th does she there run away goes. again? <laughs> but. Uh, that's like saying, uh, why couldn't Dorothy just have clicked her shoes uh, at the very beginning when she left, right? Shh, shh. <laughs> we don't bring that up. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that. All right. So that does it for our top five non-holiday movies for the holidays. It's a very subjective um, subject. So if there's any that you would like to share, please let it be known at MacGuffinPodcast.com. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Peace. Even can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side of that. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all.